plans to expand in Asia, where it already makes more than three quarters of its profit. It avoided the funding strain that caused Royal Bank of Scotland's government bailout. That's because Standard Chartered takes in more money in customer deposits than it lends out. The stock is down more than 40% in London this year, but it's still the second best performer in the FTSE 350 banks index. Let's do a currency check at the moment. The Korean won is up for a second day after the government's financial rescue package. For more, let's talk to our currency reporter, Patricia Louis. Now, Trish, the won rising. Are traders expecting this to be sustained? Hi, Haas. Uh, yeah, the Wanda actually rose as much as 8% this morning uh, uh, following the rescue package. And the uh, uh, market has uh, got a bit of a knee-jerk knee uh, reaction to the news. And, you know, there was a lot of optimism that at least it would uh, help stabilize the financial markets. But whether it was sustained is a big question here. And already we've seen the one par by its gains. It's now up only 2% uh, from the start of the session. Um, markets are saying that, you know, despite uh, after all that has been done at the end of the day, they'll still focus on the real economy which is expected to continue to slow down uh, and also there'll be uh, the current account deficit and the trade deficit will continue to weigh on the Korean won uh, until the, the, the situation improves uh, into into next year so market still expecting uh, the the won to to weaken further out ahead but at least for the time being the credit crunch uh, and the credit problems uh, with Korean banks uh, is a uh, is a uh, big tackle at the moment has Trish, I'm looking at the other Asian currencies. They're looking slightly firmer this morning as well. What's the talk on the streets? Uh, yeah, uh, they, they are taking a cue from um, the, from what's happening in Korea, and markets are cautiously positive about the, the move. Uh, but having said that, that as we move into uh, early European time, uh, markets actually expecting the uh, most of the, the gains to be powering back. We had the Korea, uh, sorry, uh, we had the Australian and Kiwi dollar uh, firmer this morning because high yielders being what, what they are, you know, they they do get bought back a, quite, a little bit this morning. Um, um, Money market rates are a bit uh, softer as well this morning following the Korean uh, uh, decision and the HKMA injected some liquidity in the system as well. So yes, um, markets are slightly better this morning. Back to you, Haas. All right, Trish. We have to leave it there. Thanks so much for that. Now, options traders are increasing bets. Oil will fall to $50 a barrel. How much? The Bloomberg Wind Energy Index. Brought to you in association with Vestas, number one in modern energy. The Bloomberg Wind Energy Index. Brought to you in association with Vestas, number one in modern energy. Connect with the bank that's been connecting Asia, Africa, and the Middle East for 150 years. Standard Chartered Bank.
to have believed that folks oil at $50 a barrel was history, but crude is pointing in that direction because of the financial market mess. Options contracts to sell oil at $50 by December soared 28-fold in the last two weeks. And OPEC may drastically cut output for the first time in two years. Oil is down more than 50% since peaking in July. Prices hit a 14-month low just last week. Now, crude oil is up for a second day in New York as traders bet OPEC or Organization of Petroleum Exporting Countries will cut output to counter falling prices. OPEC meets this Friday three weeks earlier than planned amid expectations. Crude prices may fall to $50 a barrel. Shakib Khalil, rather, OPEC's president says its members may cut output by 2 million barrels a day as demand falls. And here with more is Tom James, senior commodity trading advisor at advisory firm www.tomjames.org. Hey, Thank welcome. You. Thank you. So, are they likely to cut a million, two million? I mean, these are the figures being tossed around. I think they, you know, one to two million cutback. It's uh, well, quite quite likely. And the reality is that supply of OPEC crude to the market has already dropped about half a million barrels in recent recent months, um, and. China that's been sort of looking at the price of oil coming off, as you said, 50% uh, over the last few months, is now buying more. It's, you know, demands up 10% year on year as they try to build up a strategic stock. OPEC doesn't have a target price, but Vene Venezuelan um, Chavez has come out to say that 80 or 90 is pretty sufficient and comfortable. What are you looking at? I think at least $70, I think that's a sort of comfortable area. It's actually, um, it's important that we do hold around the $67, 60 to $70 area on an average basis. I know some of the big investment banks have been looking at about $85 average for next year, which would be very healthy for the industry. Because I know, you know, as consumers, we're all consumers of energy, we want cheap prices at the petrol pumps, etc. But uh, if we see sort of $50 or below, for many, many months, this is going to really hurt investment in the industry, which you know is already being damaged by the banking crisis a little bit as it is. And a lot of the new oil that's been found in Brazil, uh, off the, the west coast of Africa, deep offshore oil in the sea, uh, it's, it costs more than $50 to get most of this out of the ground. Is OPEC likely to continue to cut output going forward, considering the fact that we've not seen the worst of the financial turmoil? Uh, you're right. We haven't seen the worst yet. The dust hasn't even settled yet uh, in the banking crisis. Um, you know, oil trading, oil investment, the small cap oil and gas <clears throat> exploration production companies uh, have all sort of seeing uh, access to capital drying up a little bit. Um, interesting enough, we're seeing private equity firms uh, coming in, looking when the dust settles to come in and buy assets, uh, maybe consolidate the industry a little bit as well. Um, but I think, um, you know, this $50, $60 level should, should hold. Definitely. Goldman and Merrill came out to say that they expect prices to fall, what, a further 44 percent going forward? I think, um, you know, you mentioned about uh, put options in, uh, in December, uh, crude oil uh, being uh, bought up by investors. Uh, it's true to say that there is risk to the downside in the short term. A, a lot of that risk doesn't necessarily have anything to do with the fundamentals of supply and demand. You know, the, the big move from $100 down to current levels, a lot of that happened very quickly as banks and other funds, you know, they were seeing redemptions or they, see to, they needed to take profits in commodity transactions to pay bills elsewhere in the financial markets. So we saw a lot of liquidation in the markets that forced prices down very, very rapidly. But, but why not fundamentals? If, if you're looking at economies, even China is slowing down. I mean, we're looking at below 9% growth by China standards, that's, that's pretty mm. slow. So can yeah. you expect demand destruction in that sense? Well, I know I tell people that, <clears throat> come on, we've got billions of people that still haven't bought their, their first refrigerator. So there's still a lot of domestic growth that's it's not going to disappear overnight. Uh, we're still expecting global oil demand to increase over the next 12 months or so. We are seeing a contraction and a lowering of, of demand growth estimates. But we're still growing. We still need to invest in the industry. It costs more uh, to get at the oil, which, we've, which we can find. It's harder to find, harder to get out of the ground. So, you know, naturally, prices will, in the long run, keep going up. They, they don't make oil anymore. Where else will demand grow apart from China? I think Africa. I mean, Africa has been very understated by a lot of people. So I think uh, China, India, Brazil obviously got its, uh, its lot of ethanol production, so its own, it's not using a lot of oil domestically. It exports more and more. 
uh, Africa is 5% GDP growth. And uh, I think there's big upside there. That, that's the place to watch, I think. Mm. And the risk factors going forward, if you can name us two risk factors that we should be looking out for. Well, I think all, like all industries, we've now seen the banking crisis. We're only just starting to see that hitting the corporate world. And it, and it will hit oil and gas investment. That's why it's important, in fact, for consumers to hope that we, we can hold around $60, $70 a barrel and not see below that for any uh, consistent period of time, because then we may get the short-term gain, but in the long run, it means a lot of oil won't come out of the ground in the future, and we'll end up with three, four hundred dollars in ten years' time. So, mm. so you're pretty optimistic for the time being that seventy, eighty dollar oil yeah. is sustainable going forward. Yeah, the big yeah. risk is uh, is credit liquidity and investment, which we're only going to see next year. See how hurt the industry is. All right, Tom James, thank you so much for joining us today. And still to come on the program, hear what the man who just won the Nobel Prize in Economics says about when will emerge from the recession. Stay with us for that. Welcome back to Bloomberg Live from Hong Kong. We talk about the implications for policy. Two percent spike on Wall Street could translate to some the meltdown gains. in the U.S. mortgage market. Deep run refineries amounting to 50 billion. More than 99 percent of Checking online. Checking back in on Asian stocks.